Hello, my name is Georg Zwilling and I'm deputy head of the Aarhusen Archive and I will, will be taking you today to a short tour of our archives. Um, um, the Aarhusen Archives were uh, founded as the International Tracing Service here in Bad Aarhusen in central Germany. The um, reason we are located in this uh, part of Germany is because after the war this was uh, smack in the middle of Germany and uh, between the various occupation zones, the British, the Russian, American and French. The French is a bit farther away but it's okay. The uh, archive contains more than 30 million historical documents uh, divided into several uh, collection groups. Um, in addition to the 30 million documents, we also have 50 million index cards in the central name index, which is the main analog um, access to the archive pertaining to 17 million people. We are today replacing um, this finding aid by um, digital indexing of the documents, partially with the help of Every Name Counts volunteers. Um, the first example we chose is from our concentration camp collections. Um, we will go to the cabinets containing these. Here behind me you can also already see um, this is our collection of individual documents from Buchenwald. Each cabinet contains hundreds of personal files on concentration camp in prisoners or inmates. This is the prisoner card of Paul Goyard, a Frenchman, um, an artist. He was, took part in the resistance against uh, German occupation in France, was um, uh, arrested in uh, Paris in uh, 1944. He is listed as a French political prisoner. He managed to survive. There is a short article on him uh, on our website. As I've said, there are hundreds of thousands of such files and these do not include all the prisoners uh, in all concentration camps uh, due to the fact that many of them were never registered and many of the files were destructed by the uh, Nazis um, during the war. In addition to documentation from concentration camps, we also have um, a lot of documentation con con concerning forced labor. Um, People from all around Europe were rounded to Germany to take part uh, in the war effort. Most of these were from Eastern Europe, from Poland, from the Ukraine, from Belarus, from parts of the former Soviet Union. Here we have the file of Bashkirova Mila. She was born in nowadays Belarus and was very young. Uh, you can see she was born in 1925 and all the foreigners working on German territory were registered by the police. There were forced laborers and um, civilian laborers in each factory, city and uh, farm in Germany. It's a huge number of, of people forced to work for the German war effort. And it's one of our most important collection groups, collection group two. There are many kinds of documents here, it's quite complicated and we hope to index them even deeper in the, in the uh, future. Most of the, these are available online uh, already. As you can see, the so-called wartime index which contains parts of these docu documents is huge. Um, I think it contains more than 2 million documents on individuals. The third group of documents we have are documents concerning displaced persons and um, all those people from all around Europe who found themselves on German territory um, by the end of the war. This includes a lot of survivors, Jewish and, um, and others, as well as people who for many reasons did not want to return to mainly the, the former Soviet Union. One especially interesting file from this group uh, on DPs is um, the so-called CM1 uh, file of Simon Wiesenthal. 
CM1 files are requests for assistance made by um, DP, displaced persons residing in DP camps in Germany. In this case, it's the file, uh, the application made by Simon Wiesenthal, who became uh, quite famous as a Nazi hunter, a person collecting evidence and bringing uh, perpetrators to justice. Um, Simon Wiesenthal was born in Galicia and nowadays Ukraine. Uh, he was um, arrested in Lviv, Lvov, Lemberg, um, a city in western Ukraine. Um, he was an architect and deemed as an intellectual and thus uh, arrested quite early. In the file, which is very detailed, you can see um, what happened to him during the war. He was arrested, he was uh, deported to uh, Auschwitz, he was then liberated in Mauthausen. Um, the file is really very extensive and in contrast to the Nazi documentation, contains a lot of um, information uh, given by Wiesenthal himself. And um, there is also a photo and many other identification documents uh, from, uh, from the post-war period. The collection is, by the way, available online and deeply indexed um, and contains a lot of very interesting information. I hope that this uh, short tour gave you an insight into the holdings of the Arolsen archives. We would, very, uh, we would be very happy if you could take part in our campaign, Every Name Counts, and with that, um, take a stand for respect, democracy and diversity. Thank you.